Every pizza dough recipe has the same key ingredients, flour, water, yeast, and salt. In order to truly understand how these ingredients work together and how recipes scale, you must first understand what baker's percentages are. You take all of your ingredients in your dough and calculate how much of each item you have compared to the amount of flour that is used. So for every dough recipe, flour will be 100%, everything else is measured against that. The formula looks like this. Baker's percentage equals weight of the ingredient divided by weight of the flour times 100. For a pizza, there's some general guidelines on what that percentage should be for each ingredient. Yeast, as a general rule, will be between 0.1 and 2% of the amount of flour. So if your recipe is using 1,000 grams of flour, your total yeast will be between 1 gram and 20 grams. Salt is typically between 2 and 2.5%, 2 or 20 to 25 grams in a recipe that has 1,000 grams of flour. The amount of water in a dough recipe relative to flour is referred to the hydration percentage. For pizza, it's typically between 60 and 80%, depending on the style and preference. So by adjusting the hydration level of the dough, you can achieve different results in terms of elasticity, stickiness, rise, crust puffiness, and crust texture. Increasing the hydration level of the dough will make it more extensible and stretchy, but also stickier and harder to handle. The dough will also rise faster and higher, resulting in a lighter and airier crust. Lowering the hydration level will result in a denser crust. According to the True Neapolitan Pizza Association, the ideal hydration for Neapolitan pizza dough is between 55.5 and 62.5%. So then why are so many people talking about 80 plus percent hydration on their Neapolitan pizza dough? I guess the only way to truly explain and comprehend what hydration does to pizza dough is with a perfectly executed experiment. I'm going to compare hydration amounts of 60, 70, and 80% to see how they are made and how they affect the final pizza. I'm going to use a basic dough recipe for all three levels of hydration. And just for fun, I'm going to test drive this King Arthur brand double zero flour for this little experiment. So every version of this dough will get 300 grams of flour, 0.5 grams of yeast, and 6 grams of salt. The only variable that will change is the amount of water. The process of mixing the dough will be very similar for all three versions. I'll start with all of my water, then I'll add the yeast, about half of the flour, mix that up, then I'll add in my salt and the rest of the flour. I'll continue to mix in the bowl until all of the dry flour has been absorbed. This is the 60% hydration dough. It has already formed a pretty solid dough ball and I'm able to give it a little knead on the table right away. I'll throw a lid on this and label it, then I'll get to work on the 70% hydration dough. Again, water, yeast, flour, salt, flour, mix. This will need a little more time for the flour to stiffen up before I'll be able to work it much. So I'll go ahead and transfer that to a labeled container as well and let it rest. Okay, 80% water, yeast, flour, salt, flour, mix. Again, this will be allowed to rest before I attempt to work it further. Okay, 15 minutes later and the 60% dough is already looking like pizza dough. I'll work it a little bit more, but then I'm going to put it away to proof undisturbed. Okay, here's the 70% dough. It still has a way to go, so I'll give it a few stretch and folds in the bowl and let it rest for a while. Same thing for the 80%. I repeated that two more times after 10 minutes of rest. Then the 70 and 80% got a little table stretch and fold action before I portioned all the dough balls. I let all of the dough ferment in the fridge for 36 hours, and then they were ready to use. Okay, these are the final dough balls ready to get stretched and turn into pizzas. This was the 60% right here. Uh, you know, pretty firm. Definitely easy to handle. This is our 70. I mean, feels like it's a high hydration dough for sure. And then this guy over here is our 80. You can see it's super soft. Just, I mean, that's 80% hydration for you. Let's get started. Um, just gonna stretch them out real quick. It's not gonna take much to stretch this guy. It's gonna stretch itself essentially. Just gonna degas it, try to leave the corner cone. It's 
This one's holding up, holding a stretch a little bit more, kind of pulling back. Not quite as easy as the 80, but obviously still pretty loose. All right, I don't even see this all the way over here, but this is the 60. A little more elbow grease on this one for sure. Okay, we are back. I got all three pizzas cooked. All right, that's our 60 right there. I don't know if you can see the bottoms or not, but our 80. So 60, 70, 80% hydration. Crust color on all three I feel like is pretty similar. The 60 browned the fastest for sure. It was the quickest to brown up. The other two took a little bit longer. Um, not a lot of leoparding on any of them really. So I don't know if it's the that uh, flower that I'm using. Um, was it King Art the King Arthur brand Double Zero flower? It's a newer product, which I haven't really worked with before, which is probably a mistake on an experiment like, like this. But you know, you live and you learn. Um, but the end result, we have three pizzas, the exact same recipe, except for 60, 70, and 80% hydration. All right, taste test. We're gonna start with the 80% hydration since that was the first one I cooked. It's been out the longest. In case you're curious, that's what the inside looks like. It's good. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It did get a little bit of a gum line. So I don't know if it didn't cook long enough. I mean, the top's obviously done. They got some good spotting and the bottom looks good, but a little bit of a gum line on that one. All right, this is the 70%. Try to get you a shot of the inside there. Hopefully you can see that. It's delicate, crispy, chewy. Got all the textures. Flavor is about the same. I don't think the flavor development is going to be that different across these three. Mostly going to be a texture and a visual thing. So, get you a shot of the inside. This is the 60%. Maybe not as delicate. It's a def it's definitely denser. It's the most dense. The 60s the 60% 60 is the most dense of the of the three for sure. Um, flavors across the board are the same. They're all good. They all developed good flavor. Um, but yeah, denser on that one, whether or not between the 70 and 80, I don't know if I could really discriminate whether if one's denser or not. I think the, the 70 got crisper, but it's also been cooked fresher than the 80. So it's a little hard to compare that. Um, so honestly, I think between between the three, I think I like the 70% hydration the best. My usual pizza dough is about 64, 65% hydration. So kind of in between these two anyways. And you know, honestly, I think that might be the sweet spot for like a rock box pizza oven or um, a similar home pizza oven that cooks around 850, somewhere between 800 and 900 degrees. That said, the hassle of the higher hydration dough might not make it worth it for a lot of home pizza cooks. I mean, definitely if you're a beginner, don't even attempt to go past 60. I think 60 is a, a real good spot to start and practice and get good at. And then, you know, once you can nail that consistently and you want to start messing around with these higher hydration, but you're not going to get that drastic of a result of a difference in results. It's just, you know, it, you're, you're nitpicking at this point and sure you can make, slightly better pizza, but you're gonna have to spend a lot more time and a lot more chance of failure with the higher hydration dough. So that said, I'm making like 63 to 65%. That's the sweet spot for me. I don't know about you.